Voice activated video editing is already here. Not five years from now, not someday. It literally exists right now. Trim the clip. Add a transition to the first clip. Add an adjustment layer. Add a cinematic music track to the A1 track. Zoom in on subject. Now listen, if you give me just 20 minutes of your time, I'm gonna give you a piece of information that will stick with you for the next 10 years. This is one of those career shifting insights. And I'm saying that because the tech world is moving insanely fast and no one is talking about this. You'll probably hear about it in a few years when it's mainstream, but by then people will already be making money off of it, building workflows around it, launching businesses with it. Right now it's just a few people in niche forums and beta channels connecting the dots. Shout out to Mike Chambers, more on him in a bit. And here's the crazy part. I work inside Adobe Creative Suite. I'm talking about Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Photoshop. And these programs weren't built to take voice commands. They weren't made to be automated. They were designed around GUIs. I'm talking about graphical user interfaces. I'm talking about menus, buttons, and mouse clicks. Trying to get AI to control that kind of software is like trying to give a speech to someone who only understands sign language. You don't understand anything I'm saying, do you? They can't understand you. Not unless you build a translator. And that translator now exists. There has been a breakthrough. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through it. So let's get into this. The keyword for today's video is MCP. That stands for Model Context Protocol. It's an open standard that enables developers to build secure two-way connections between their data sources and AI-powered tools. In our case, this mysterious word MCP is what's going to actually help us connect our voice to our software like Premiere Pro. Here's how I want you to think about this whole setup. Imagine you're a movie director and you've got this actor on a stage. Let's call that actor Premiere Pro. Now you, the director, aren't going to just go down there and trim clips yourself. You're going to give commands, trim this section, move this to the top layer, export a 60 second vertical cut. But here's the catch. Your actor, AKA Premiere Pro, doesn't speak English. And not only that, they're also a little particular. They only take instructions from their personal assistant. Your line is, hello. Tu línea es, hola. So now we gotta bring in a translator, a middleman, to take what you're saying and deliver it in a way that the actor actually understands. That's the whole system that we're about to walk through. So guys, the actual process that we're talking about and that we're gonna actually look at as far as getting this to work is we're gonna talk to an AI like Claude or ChatGBT. And you're gonna have that AI control your editing software, not by clicking stuff manually, of course, but by actually generating the actual code that runs inside Premiere Pro or After Effects or Photoshop. And to do that, you need a whole chain of tools working together. Think of it like a relay team, passing the baton from your voice all the way down to your timeline. Now let's start with Claude. Claude is the AI that you're talking to. Now, Claude doesn't automatically know how Premiere works. I mean, it doesn't come built in with every single feature that Premiere Pro can actually do. So we install a plugin called Claude MCP plugin on Claude's side. This plugin is basically a menu and it tells Claude what's actually possible. It's like Claude saying, okay, Premiere Pro knows how to trim clips. It knows how to rename sequences. It can import footage. It can export in vertical or horizontal formats. So when you give Claude a voice command, something like create a vertical cut for TikTok, Claude uses that menu to figure it out. It says something like, okay, these are the actual actions that Premiere can actually perform. This MCP plugin isn't running anything at this point. It's just helping Claude understand what's even allowed. Okay, what's next? We're gonna talk about something called the MCP server. So once Claude knows what's actually possible, it has to figure out how to actually make it happen. So it sends a request to something called the MCP server. And this is where things get real. The MCP server is like a script writer. It takes Claude's idea and turns it into actual code. In this case, it's gonna be JavaScript code that Premiere Pro can actually run. So if Claude says, let's import these clips, trim to the beat 
and at a crossfade, the MCP server will respond with something like, cool, here's the exact JavaScript to actually do that. It's basically translating your voice into Premiere Ready automation. Okay, now it's time to talk about the proxy server. Now, that code that the MCP server just created has to get into Premiere Pro somehow. But here's the problem. The UXP plugin that lives inside Premiere, it can't just sit around waiting for messages to pop up. It's just not allowed to be a listener. In other words, it can't just receive stuff whenever it wants. It can ask for updates, but it can't just sit there like, I'm ready, send it to me. So we introduced something called a proxy server. Think of this proxy like a voicemail inbox. The MCP server drops the code in the proxy server and the UXB plugin inside Premiere Pro will periodically pick up the phone and say, hey, got any new instructions for me? And that's how we get around that limitation. Now it's time to talk about the UXP plugin. We're finally now inside Premiere and the UXP plugin is actually running inside that app. It checks inside the proxy inbox, finds that new script from the MCP server, and then it goes, okay, cool, I know how to run this. Then boom, it executes the code and say, trims your footage, applies effects, exports the sequence, whatever you were originally asked Claude to do. This is the actual moment where your voice becomes an actual edit. It's pretty wild. And by the way, this only works inside Premiere Pro beta right now because Premiere Pro's main version still uses CEP, which can't run this type of plugin. You need to use Premiere Pro beta because again, that is where the UXP plugins are actually supported. So let me just run you through this whole thing one more time, real quick. You say, hey Claude, trim this video to the beat and export it vertical. Claude then checks the MCP plugin to see what Premiere Pro is actually capable of. Remember, that's your menu. Then Claude sends the request to the MCP server, which is the thing that actually turns your idea into real JavaScript code. Then the MCP server drops the code into the proxy server, like a voicemail waiting to be picked up. And then that UXP plugin inside Premiere Pro checks the proxy and finds the script, then runs it. And that's it. That's how your timeline gets updated just from your voice. Guys, who's Mike Chambers? Mike Chambers is the Senior Director of Community at Adobe, and he's literally the one that built this whole system that we've been talking about. This specific system is called ADB MCP. This is the official name of the entire tool set that we've been talking about. That includes the Cloud plugin, the MCP server, the proxy, the UXP plugin, all working together in sync. And the coolest part, we're about to see him actually use it to automate a real edit inside Premiere Pro right now. Check this out guys, watch as he creates an entire animated photo slideshow in Premiere Pro using a single spoken prompt in Cloud. This was the spoken prompt. I wanna make a video slideshow of some black and white street photography I took from London that are saved on my file system. First, I want you to create a title slide from one of the images, open it in Photoshop, add some text, London street, in the center of the photo and using a small font with no drop shadow, and then three small white dots in the horizontal line on the bottom right of the image. Save that as a PNG, then import that PNG and others into Premiere, using the PNG as the title image. Pick a single modern transition to use in between images, and then add some soft music to it. That is definitely a crazy long prompt. And there it is. The final video isn't perfect, but keeps this in mind, this is the worst this tech will ever be. This was June of 2025 that Mike Chambers created this. Fast forward just a couple of months, and what we'll then be able to do is gonna look wild in comparison.